So a couple weeks back, I went to a little, little trip to the old Barnes & Noble because I had a little gift card for, oh, it was Christmas. Well, that took me a while to get to. And I went in and I bought a big old stack of mangas, as you might have noticed I have a tendency to do. When looking through the books, I had $20 and I didn't know what to buy. And I decided to finally chunk down some money on my greatest decision I've ever made of all time. Junji Mother and Ito. Now I've watched a lot of horror. A lot. I've played hundreds of horror games, watched hundreds of horror movies. I've experienced every kind of horror thing you could possibly do. I just simply love it. But even then, I was not prepared for anything that came out of this book. I cannot express in words how much I absolutely love the Junji Ito experience. For on one hand, you have some of the greatest horror visuals I've ever seen in my life. And then he puts them in the stupidest, weirdest scenarios I have ever seen in my entire life. Making the greatest combination of all time. Which is why I'm doing this next series. I'm going to look through every single one of these stories in this book. And we're going to talk about them one after another. So in short, boys, buckle your seatbelts in. And we're going to talk about blood-sucking darkness. Now, I have to ask, when you think of a bat story, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? That's right, a girl with bulimia. The story starts off with a girl who talks about having an eating disorder after having her heart broken by the boy she was in love with. And it's got a picture of him walking away with another girl. And it goes on talking about how she doesn't eat and that she's hurting herself so much that when she throws up, blood comes out. Which means we're absolutely putting her in a scenario with a bunch of blood-sucking bats. Ho, ho, ho. This will inspire all the bulimia girls out there. I'll talk more about that as we go on the story. But I <laughs> I don't really know how I feel about the bulimia part. But I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it at the end. So then after explaining all this, the girl goes into her bed. She puts on her sheets and she goes to Lil Z's land. And in sleeping, she has horrible nightmares about running through the woods with blood raining down from the heavens all over her. And she runs for her life, desperately trying to get away from all the blood. Not actually going under a tree, but that's okay. It's a dream. And for some reason, we all do stupid shit in a dream. If I had a dollar for every time I had a nightmare and I woke up and you're like strategizing in your head like, why didn't I go over there? When I get when I fall asleep, I'm gonna have such a better dream because I know what to do now, you stupid son of a bitch. I can't sleep. Damn it! Damn it! But instead of going under a tree, the poor girl slips and lands right on the ground, and then the rain runs down her. And instead of getting up, she does this. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, as you do when you're getting blood rained down on you. To be honest, at the first I thought it was acid because of her reaction, but no. It is indeed blood, but it makes sense. It intertwines with her throwing up blood, and that's an extremely traumatizing experience. So, of course, you would have dreams about blood. But then, as she's laying down on the ground, a hand comes towards her face, and the hand has a bunch of holes all over his hand, just nailing the tryptophobia feel of just, like, something with a bunch of little holes that make you go, Bleh. and then, like that, she wakes up. But in waking up, she finds blood in real life. Specks of blood all over her mouth and on the bed. She must have obviously spit out blood from the last thing we saw her throwing it up in the toilet. It must be much worse than she thought. And I gotta say, the way he drew the blood was fantastic. It is disgusting looking. It really nails home the blood stain on her bed and on her face. He... Who does an amazing job on it. Visually, I swear I could study his art for days. So anyways, after that, she did what all us normal human beings do. Uh, we go to school the next day, even though there was blood all over our bodies. But as she was walking to school, at least I'm assuming because she had her bag and her skirt on, she runs into our second character, Tani. Oh, I should also mention the main character's name is Nami. Yes, like the One Piece character, but instead of money, it's blood. <laughs> Now, Tani's a little interesting character because he's he's kind of weird. He's got a stalkerish vibe, but also in the same time, kind of has like a friendly, just like, I want to date this girl and, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna take my shot, take the swing, saying, I've seen you before and I, I really liked you and I want to be your friend. Now, this is when you start getting your red flags because you know these kind of characters in these shows. He's either going to be a stalker or murderer or a crazy person. 
So she runs and leaves Tani in the dust. She goes freaking zooming. She gets out of there. She's like, I'm out of here, buddy. I've seen my horror movies and you're not going to get me. So she leaves and then she goes home. And once again, she has her dreams where it ends up exactly the same as before. Except unlike me, she didn't actually come up with a new strategy. She just whittled around on the ground again. Going, oh, ah, e, oh, this is really inconvenient. But after having the dream again, she comes off and she goes down her routine once again. But this time, Tawny shows up, but a little different. Tawny all of a sudden starts looking a lot like her. His cheeks thinned, his body looking stickish. He's looking like he did a lot of damage to himself over the night. She's doing exactly the Tawny that the boy she liked did to her. And she suddenly sees the damage that she's doing as she has history repeat itself. <laughs> no, that's not the real reason, you silly goose. There's no learning in Junji Ito. There's only horror. So this boy says, hey, listen, I'm on a diet. Don't worry about it. I'm perfectly fine. I'm just on a nice diet like you. And he's like, hey, you want to see my secret base? Which is always a great thing to do in a horror scenario. So these nerds, they walk all the way to his house. They freaking go all the way downtown. They take a right. They take a left. They go to his house. And there lies a big old shed. Uh-oh. Why has he got a big old shed? So they waddle up onto the shed. They open the magic doors. Bats. Hundreds of bats all on the ceiling. Gripping God knows what. I don't... Can bats just kind of grip onto a ceiling? I don't think this is accurate. In one of the best visuals you could ask for. This is terrifying. There's so many that even if you don't have a bat fear, it freaks you right out. Just seeing that visual. Even though if you truly zoom in, it is the most adorable little thing. There's one that wiping his little eye is sleepy. Who's opening a door like this early in the morning? That's right, he has an entire shed filled to the brim with bats. And instead of him being on a diet, he's actually feeding the bats his own blood and you start to see his hands and notice it's exactly like the hands in her dreams with all the holes on it except these holes aren't made from nothing they're made from bat bites all over and he's that skinny because he feeds them his own blood these vampire bats suck Toonie's blood to survive pretty scary huh that's pretty spooky. This guy is 100% an absolute maniac. Tooney goes up and says, hey, listen, these are my friends. These are my boys, right? These are just my, uh, you know, my pets. I feed them my blood. And what you might be thinking is, that's insane. Except... Tooney was right. Tooney goes up and says, hey, my bat friends like you. And they see you have a low amount of blood. And the bat, I shit you not, goes and spits blood right at her. Oh! 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 She's freaking out as this bat crawls to save her life. He's like, my God, this woman's bulimic and she's spitting up blood. She's got low blood count. I gotta save her life. This little freaking bat's going for his life. What does she do? Smacks the bat. She smacks the bat. You know what the bat was trying to do? He's trying to get her mouth and go, oh, Patooey, Mama Bird the baby girl. <laughs> the bat tries to save her life? There's no catch to it. That's actually what happened. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. These bats didn't attack her once. Not a single bit. They didn't attack her. They tried to save her life? What? Now I'm hooked. Now I'm hooked. I don't know where this is going to go. But then she freaks out. My God, Toonie's a nutter. He's got all these bats in his freaking shed feeding him his own blood. I'm out of here. She starts freaking hauling it. She's hauling her little tushy out of there. She's getting, a, she's like, get the hell away from me. And Toonie's a little ticked off too. He's like, what the hell? Why'd you hit my bat? He's just trying to be a bro. But he runs after her. Like, no, you don't understand. Come back. Come back. I have to explain. Bow train hits Toonie. I couldn't believe it. Thomas the tank engine at this hour. 
and Toonie was dead. Blew up like he was in an old timey FPS and his jibs went everywhere. Arms, legs, head, everywhere. And as his body lay there, his bat friends flew down, swooped down and started licking the blood on the ground. They started drinking their very owner's blood, proving that these bats never truly cared about him. They just wanted his blood. Or do they? <laughs> So then after this horrible experience, she passes the heck out. Ah! She falls out. She's done. And she wakes up whoo, in a hospital with her mother and a couple nurses. Like, oh my God, you're alive. Are you okay? And as she wakes up, you see the girl look exactly like Toonie. Covered head to toe with tiny little bite marks all over her body. The bats, as soon as she passed out, attacked her and started sucking her of all of her blood but not enough blood to kill her because for some reason these bats, these African bats, I forgot to mention this, this is very important. Toonie at one point said, hey, I got some pet African bats that I got from, I guess, Africa. Actually, it seems I've done an oopsie poopsies racism. It was actually from South America, not Africa. They like to share blood with each other. Like if this guy comes home and he's like, I'm full. And then he's like, thanks, Jim. Thanks for the blood. I really appreciate it. I was having a cold today. Sadly, after that, he was eaten by a Chinese man. Rest in peace, Felipe. She then tries to explain to people that she was bit by a bunch of bats, and this is where all the holes were. And they say, you dumbass bitch. There ain't no vampire bats in Japan. You're freaking loony. Get out of here. And they kick her ass out of the street. They don't believe her. Classic horror story trope, which is hilarious to me because they don't know how to explain the thousands of holes. It's not like she's crazy and just saying stuff. She actually actually has the bite marks and nobody believes her and so she goes home and next is one of the scariest greatest horror scenes i've ever seen she's laying in bed and the bats start smacking into her window and she's freaking out oh my god these bats have found me and then the bats start crawling out of crevices they crawled into holes and got into a room like you see it coming out of the bookshelf and going through all these cracks and it is legitimately terrifying to see them like crawling through little holes and cracks and getting in and then jumping all over the place and rushing towards you it is truly terrifying and i have to say one of the greatest scenes in this entire story it literally gave me the chills i don't mind bats i actually think most bats are very cute but the thought of a bunch of little creatures like lunging towards you freaks me out and they also have them bounce so like i think he tried to make them like flea like so she books it she gets out of there somehow this army of bats not a single one attached to him the bats, okay? They can't they can't jump, all right? When bats are on the ground, they have a really hard time flying. They gotta like fall and then fly. So their bouncing was not effective. She essentially just stepped on all of them, like, ah shit. <laughs> I don't have anything to grab a hold of. I just got these little like weird bat hands. This this is very ineffective, guys. This was really stupid. So she runs out, and she runs out into the street, and she looks up in the sky, seeing the bats just flying in all different directions, doing different formations, and an awesome visual. And then she starts running, like a man who sees a very, very poor hooker. Oh, jeez, she's not going to stop till she sucks me. And as she gets into the night, she starts hearing moaning and wailing of, there's not enough blood, and she can hear Toonie's ghostly voice. She's like, oh, shit. Those stupid cops missed his head. So she's frantically looking around and watching where the bats are going. And the, all the bats go to Toonie's head. And all of a sudden, boom, a bunch of bats fly in. And the bats attach themselves to the vein of his head and start circulating blood into Toonie's head. And he opens his eyes and is alive. The murderous bats were saving his life? <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. These bats bit her solely on the fact that they were trying to get blood back to their daddy. They weren't going to let the boy down. They worked day and night. Hundreds of bats continuously putting blood into his head to make sure that the brain never died in circulated blood. These bats 
are the greatest heroes of all time. This broke me. This broke me. This broke me. Because I realized really quick that the bats were never evil. They were literally just bats. And not just normal bats. These are loyal, life-saving EMT bats. But Ryan, how does the story end, though? She looks down at Toonie's head. Toonie opens his eyes and looks at her and proceeds to say these exact words. <laughs> I shit you not. Toonie's head turns into a giant bat. And Toonie flies up into the sky with his friends and lives happily ever after. <laughs> I almost died laughing. I almost died laughing when I first read this. I could not believe this. Oh, also, I should mention the ending is she's sitting there and she looks up as Toonie flies down and it starts raining blood and it does the exact dream she had. And she's like, ah, oh, God, no. Oh, God, ah. And that's it. That's how it ends. They had a couple dribbly bats. They drank so much blood to save their boy that they kind of dribbled a bit and they made rain. That's the end of the story. The end. What was that? The greatest story about bats ever. That's what it is. I sat and thought about this story for days. Days I thought about this story. Every single horror trope that normally happens doesn't happen. None of it. Nothing happens. Nobody's the villain. There's no villain. But a thousand heroes. <laughs> These bats just wanted her to be healthy for their friend, their dad, to be alive. It wasn't even about a meal. If it was about a meal, they wouldn't have given him blood to turn him into a bat head. I don't even know if Junji is trying to say it's scary because the bats turned him into a freaking giant bat. But he was dead. So they saved his life. So the villain is essentially the bulimic girl. What? <laughs> I feel like there is some symbolism in here, right? About how uh, bulimic girls and uh, people who have these mental issues have a really hard time getting help because they find help to be disgusting. It's not what they're what they're thinking of what is beauty, right? They think what is ugly is surviving, which is the bats, because beauty becomes warped. Or Junji and Toon just want to do what the hell he wants? I cannot tell with Junji if what he writes is literally just trying to tell me something, or he's just fucking being Junji. I can't tell. I have no idea. I feel like there's symbolism in there, but I also feel there's none whatsoever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have literally no idea. All I know is... Tootie is living with his friends for the rest of his life as a giant bat. They saved his life. They freaking tried to give blood to her. These bats are now going around saving the world. They are the newest character in My Hero Academia. Not even a human. It's just a bunch of bats chilling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was only the first story in this Junji Ito book. And that was 40 pages. The entire story was told in 40 pages in this book. And I loved every second of it. The visuals, the story, it made me laugh so incredibly hard. I love this so much. And I hope you guys love it as much as I. Because the second story is more batshit crazy than the story about bats. I want to ask you guys. Do you think that this story that Junji put was trying to say something or... Was Junji Ito just trying to make a spooky story? I can't tell if he succeeded successfully in trying to make a story about a bulimic girl or he failed miserably. <laughs> I can't tell. I have no fucking idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. But I don't care. 
because I love it so very much. From what I've read, it seems Junji Ito gets an idea that is terrifying and then proceeds to make a story around it. This one is the thought of a thousand bats trying to bite you. He was thinking, I got to make bats scary. I've got this idea. It really gives me a spooks. I get it. But then he puts it in the most batshit crazy story I've ever heard for a horror story. And I love every second of it. God bless you, bats. You are the hero that everyone needed in the Junji Ito universe. If there's a dead person out there, there's a bunch of African bats coming to save all of us from ourselves, from trains, and from satanic creatures. God bless you, beautiful bats. I will always love you. And Junji Ito, <laughs> thank you for story one. That was story one, folks. Um, if you guys enjoy this, I will continue this. We will. There will be a second one because I, I have, I have to talk about the second one, which is called Ghost of Prime Time. So that will be the next one. It's about a comedian. Now I hope you guys don't take me talking about how stupid this is as a bad thing because it's very rare that I hear a story that truly surprises me and I'm like I can't I don't I didn't see this coming I didn't know I wasn't I was I didn't expect the ride that stuff I love while also just having amazing art great stuff great stuff I absolutely enjoy this guys if you freaking thought this was crazy, please, I implore you, go get a Junji Ito book. There's a bunch of them about small stories. There's a lot of gross stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff. But if you love horror, you have to pick this up. This story almost killed me. And uh, the second one is even worse. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I really need to hear your comments. Your you Put the likes. Put everything down if you want this continued because I really would love to do this as a new series. Any new people watching this, if you enjoyed it, I really would appreciate your comments and stuff like that. Tell me what you think uh, because this isn't normally what I do, but I would love to continue doing stuff like this. But anyways, folks, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.